Hi, welcome back to Happy Apple Core Homestead. Today we're going to talk about long-term food storage. First thing I'm going to do is just tell you what I have out here and talk a little bit about that and then we'll just jump right in. This right here is a five gallon bucket. It happens to be food grade. For this application you do not need to use a food grade bucket uh, because the mylar that we have here is going to be the barrier between your food and the bucket. I like to use the food grade buckets because I like them to have a dual purpose for food and then maybe later in the future for water. This is a gamma lid. I like these lids because it's convenient for getting the food in and out of the bucket. The problem with it is that it is not waterproof. Um, you could tell if you filled this bucket full of water, put this lid on it, and then dumped it out, like the water would come out. So it's not 100% waterproof. You can buy waterproof lids for these types of buckets. They're really hard to get on and off. So I'm just using a gamma lid right now. These are also very expensive. So you can buy your bucket separately and your lid separately. This part and the ring here come as one unit and it's easy because it just spins right on. So super easy to get in and out of the bucket without any special tools and without um, breaking the lid or breaking the seal on the lid. Okay, this is a Mylar bag that is designed for five gallon buckets. Um, I have the measurements, hold on. 18 by 28 and it's a five mil Mylar bag. So we've got that. And over here, I have a flat iron for hair, but I don't use it for my hair. I use it for this. Alternatively, you could use a like an iron that you iron your clothes with. And I always recommend that you keep a cast iron iron because what if we don't have electricity and you need to reseal your food bags? would be nice to have one of these around. Obviously this one is decorative. I have some other ones that are more utilitarian in style. Um, but this one would work in a pinch too. Okay, here I have oxygen absorbers. For the five gallon bucket, you're gonna wanna use 2000 cc's. Uh, they come in 2000 cc's. They come in all different sizes. And you'll notice that this is in, they're all in one big bag and they do come this way if you buy them in bulk. I know that some come individually wrapped so like each one has its own little airtight wrapper. Now this is a really important tip that I'm, I might forget to mention later so I'm going to tell it to you now. We're not going to open this bag until the food is in and ready to seal. Then we'll open it really quick. Then we'll put in one of the 2000 cc oxygen absorbers into the mylar bag in with the food and then right away we're going to take this bag and we're going to go over to the food saver and seal it back up again. If you don't have a food saver to um, suck all the air out of your bag you can also store them in a mason jar with a really tight lid. And over here I have tons and tons of beans. These beans have been frozen for 48 hours and then taken out of the freezer and left to sit flat, each of them flat, on a, like a towel uh, until they're completely room temperature. They need to be room temperature, otherwise they can mold. And that would totally defeat the purpose of long-term food storage. Uh, the purpose of freezing it is to kill any little larva, eggs, or any other kind of little bugs that might be in here. If you think there are not bugs in your bags of food, you're probably wrong and if you do not um, freeze them first and you seal them in mylar they will just they will eat your food and you will not I mean I guess it's extra protein if you want to go that route I just freeze mine um, no big deal some people actually take these they fill up everything and then they put it in the freezer I don't do that because I still think there's gonna be like a moisture issue but I can't prove that because I don't do it that way but some people do all right, last bit of advice before we go ahead and just um, show you an example of filling up a bucket. Once all of your food is um, packaged up and ready to go, you're going to want to store this in a place that doesn't have rodents because believe it or not, rats can chew through all of this. 
I mean, I can't guarantee that they will, but I will not be storing these like out where rats are. <laughs> um, just keep them away from rodents. Keep it in a somewhat temperature controlled atmosphere. It will last longer if you do that. You know, if you're storing it somewhere that's going to be repeatedly freezing and then getting up to 110 degrees, which I'm going to have to work on that. I have some temperature control issues. Um, it's not going to last quite as long. Okay, let's jump in. Okay, first thing, we're just going to open up this bag. And stick it in the bucket. I might need a step stool for this. I'm a short girl. Okay, that looks pretty good. You can fold um, the corners down um, before you stick it in and it'll be like a little bit more flat on the bottom. It's not necessary, but you can do it if you want. Okay, now we're just gonna open up all these bags and put our beans in. I'm going to clean up my workspace and we'll get right onto it. Great! Our bucket is full and now it's time to seal. If you want to go the iron route, um, the best way to do that is after you put your oxygen absorber in, you squish the air down, you get a flat surface here, like, I don't know, a board or something, right? And you just bend it over like this, so something that will, like, protect um, this, the rim of your bucket, and then you just run your iron along, just like that, all the way to the edges. But we're going to use a flat iron for hair today, so it's going to look just a little bit different. Okay, now, I'm going to get prepared for resealing these, because I'm going to throw this in and reseal it really fast. And put in one 2000 cc right into the top of the food and then I'm gonna pop over and um, reseal this bag really quick all right now that these are all packaged up and resealed let's go ahead and take care of this guy I have had my flat iron already on so it's nice and hot and ready to go you're gonna want to squeeze the air out as much as you can out of your bag. The oxygen absorber will take care of the rest. <clears throat> you want this aligned up as straight as possible and you do want to seal it close to the top <clears throat> as opposed to sealing it way down close to the food because once you open this you may want the opportunity to reseal it again because you know, if you do a big thick seal, it's really not necessary. You can, but it's not necessary. You can just do a thin seal at the top. You know, I don't know, what is that, an inch maybe? About that long, all the way across the top. And then when you want to open it, you just cut right below that line. And then you have be able to reseal it again just below that cut line. Okay. nice and straight and you get your flat iron and you just start at one edge here and if you hold it too long you will melt the mylar so just use a gentle hand and slide it right across and you can leave a little um, spout there in the middle and we'll just use that to um, push out a little bit more air and we'll go to the other side here. Turn the center. Get some air, extra air out. 
and then get that center spot sealed. All right, now that it's sealed, we're gonna go over it one more time just to make sure. Starting at the corners here. nicely sealed mylar bag so you can see there's a little puff of air still in there a couple little air pockets no big deal because that oxygen absorber is going to shrink this bag and make it really nice and tight and um, a no air atmosphere so while we're waiting for that we're just going to label oh I think I threw my pen in the garbage when I was cleaning up let me go dig in the garbage I'll be right back Okay, that was gross. Let me clean my pen now and my hands and I'll be right back. Ugh. Okay, I'll sanitize my gross garbage pen. Okay, now, now you can label your Mylar bag with what's in it and the date that you sealed it. Okay, and just fold all of this down and put your lid on. That is all there is to it. This bucket is ready to be set aside for a rainy day when we need it. Uh, what kinds of things can you store like this? Well, you can do all kinds of beans. Uh, you can do rice, wheat berries, pasta. Uh, my one advisory on rice is to not use brown rice because it does tend to go rancid uh, quite a bit faster because of the oils and fats that are in the rice, I know. It's more healthy for you, but it doesn't really work as well for long-term food storage. As you can see, it's not really too difficult to do. Uh, it doesn't really cost a whole ton of money. Uh, the most expensive investment are these gamma lids. And of course, if you buy uh, mylar bags or um, oxygen absorbers in bulk, that can add up over time. If you um, guys wanna know where I get my supplies or anything like that, just pop me um, a comment and I will send you a link to where I purchase my different items. Thank you so much for watching my video. I hope it was helpful to you and I hope you all have a really great day. Bye.